Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm gonna to look at the shutter speed function of your film camera and how that impacts the exposure of your image. When you're shooting film or well, pretty much almost any format, your exposure of your image is made up of three main factors that you have direct control over. The ISO, the aperture, and your shutter speed. Now, I've already talked about how the ISO of your film works in a previous video, as well as aperture of your lens in another video. And now I'm gonna focus on how shutter speed on your camera actually works. On a camera body, the shutter is the piece that opens and closes really quickly to let a certain amount of light in to your film when you're exposing your image. On analog cameras like this 35 millimeter Canon, the shutter can be seen by opening the film compartment at the back. This rectangular area here is the shutter opening of your camera and the film sits right up against this part when you load it. As you take your picture, the shutter will open briefly to allow a certain amount of light into your camera and onto your film. The longer the shutter is open, the more light will get into your camera. Now, if you're shooting an SLR camera that allows you to look through the viewfinder and out the lens, then you will have a mirror at the front of your camera. This mirror is for looking through the lens from the viewfinder, and when you take your picture, it will flip up and the shutter will open up behind it. Now, if we look at a 35 millimeter manual camera like this, you will typically have a dial on the top here here with your shutter speed options. These numbers are all measured in fractions of a second. So 30 is 1 30th of a second, 500 is 1 500th of a second, and so on. So these numbers determine how long your shutter is open for. The lower your number, the longer your shutter stays open for when you're taking an image. So for example, a 15th of a second is a really slow shutter speed. Well, a 500th of a second is a very fast shutter speed. So when you're shooting film, the ISO determines how light sensitive and how grainy your film is. In the aperture on your lens determines the depth of field when you're taking a picture, so how much of it will be in focus. But your shutter speed option controls the amount of motion or shake in an image when you take your picture. Now, if you're taking pictures of moving objects, the longer your shutter speed is open for, the longer that moving object is being captured. At really slow shutter speeds as well, you also tend to start to notice shake from your camera, which is just your hands moving during this period when the shutter is open. So if you're shooting at a really slow shutter speed, like a quarter of a second, that means your camera is open for such a long time that you will start to notice some shake or motion blur just because you're shaking as your camera is taking the picture. These longer shutter speeds like that are usually when you want to start to put your camera on a tripod. Now having your shutter speed open for a really brief amount of time will actually help to freeze motion in a scene. So if you're shooting moving traffic with a shutter speed of 1 500th of a second, then you're more likely to come out with images of cars that aren't a blur and instead just look like they're standing still. On a lot of film cameras as well, you will have a number on the dial that is a different color from the other ones. This is done to represent the maximum shutter speed that you can use when you're shooting with a flash that you've connected to your camera. And this is called your flash sync speed. On a lot of cameras, it's usually 1 60th of a second, which is what you want to set your shutter speed to when you have a flash attached to your camera. If you go for a faster shutter speed than 1 60th, it means that the shutter won't be open long enough to capture your image while the flash is going off. And that's a bit of a problem, and usually when you come out with images that look a little little bit like this. Some cameras also have options to go down to shutter speeds like one, which means it is open for one full second. And a lot of cameras also have B on the dial and B stands for bulb. Now this is a bit of a dated term and has to do with old school shutter release mechanisms that would have a bulb involved when you're taking long exposures to keep the shutter open. But ultimately it just means that the shutter will stay open when it's set on B for as long as you hold that button down. Or as long as you have a shutter release cable attached and you keep that shutter open. Again, these slow shutter speeds just allow you to be able to do long exposures on your camera. Now again, when we're capturing exposure, we're talking about light in a unit called stops. So increasing your exposure by one stop means that you're doubling the amount of light in your image. And decreasing your exposure by one stop means that you're only capturing half the amount of light than you were before. Now I talked about this as well in the ISO and the aperture video because ISO, aperture, and shutter speed all play a big part in determining the amount of stops of light that you're capturing when you're exposing your image. Now, now in terms of shutter speed, when we're increasing or decreasing stops, it's just
just reliant on how much we're changing our shutter speed. So to capture double the amount of light in an exposure, which would be adding one stop of light, we divide our shutter speed in half. And to decrease our exposure by half the amount of light, which is subtracting one full stop of light from our image, then we double our shutter speed. So if a picture is taken with 1 60th of a second for a shutter speed, and then we want to take another picture which is one stop brighter or double the amount of light from our previous exposure, then we have the shutter speed open for twice as long, which goes from 1 60th of a second to 1 30th of a second. And this doubles the amount of light that the camera body is letting in when you're exposing your image onto your film. Now, if we take that 1 60th of a second exposure and we want to decrease the amount of light by half, which is decreasing our exposure by one full stop, then we would only want our shutter speed open for half as long to let in half the amount of light. So we take our 1 60th of a second shutter speed and we make it one full stop faster by changing it to 1 1 25th of a second. So now your shutter is only open for half as long as it was before, capturing half the amount of light, which means that you're decreasing your image by one full stop. So at this point, I've focused on ISO, aperture, and shutter speed all separately to kind of look at what each one does individually. So now in an upcoming video, I can take all three of these concepts and look at how they all work together in unison to be able to determine exposure perfectly. So thank you guys so much for watching this and checking this out. And I really hope that some of these videos have been able to help you understand exposure a little little bit more and maybe eliminate some of that confusion when you're upgrading from a point and shoot film camera to a manual film camera and having full control over your exposure. Subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to post all sorts of analog content every week focusing on things like this with exposure and different formats, more obscure formats and different cameras and things. So thanks so much and I'll see you guys soon.